now going to have a sprint to lunch. Today, the disruptive ideas will once again be three short, sharp presentations, eight to ten minutes each, to give you something to talk about over lunch in just a few minutes. We'll wrap up, we'll head from here directly into the networking space and into lunch. So, we're going to start with Abdullah al Swaham, who's the Deputy General Manager at Cisco Saudi Arabia, where he's responsible uh, for the remarkable efforts there. It's a multi-million dollar, a multi-million organization that oversees the business development and acceleration of Saudi's national ICT priorities. He's an active member of the regional ICT community. He's a board member of the Technology Advisory Board in Prince Mohammed bin Fat University and was a keynote speaker at a number of events recently, such as the Internet of Everything, the Cisco Connect Business Innovation, and Saudi Mobile Conference. And he holds multiple executive education credentials from Harvard Business School in finance, economics, basis, analytics, and disruptive strategy. And we're going to hear from Abdullah about Ubeba, a technology incubator that launched the first Uber for healthcare in the Middle East. Kura. Abdullah. All right. Thank you so much. New disruptive ideas to the new economies. Economies that are powered by the next generation of the internet. Moving from the information technology age all the way to the digital age. Starting with just under a billion dollars in the 90s, people connected to the internet and things that are connected to the internet. Fast forwarding today to about 13 billion things that are connected to the internet. And in five years, we're going to see 50 billion new things connected to the internet. Today, over the next eight to ten minutes, I'm going to talk to you about how new concepts, such as the new Uber for healthcare, for education, for social services, can disrupt everything. If we talk about the new rules of the new economy, digital economy, the pace of change is changing so rapidly that today, if you look at the next 10 years, it is predicted that 40% of enterprises will not exist. Today we live in a world where you either disrupt or be disrupted. So what are the digital disruptors that are practically changing everything? I'll show you some global and local examples. But generally speaking, the first disruption was social. Today, from just my smartphone, I could launch a Twitter campaign in Saudi Arabia and reach around 18 million Saudi customers. In the Middle East, I can reach around 100 million. And globally, on Facebook alone, I can reach more than a billion customers. The second disruption was the proliferation of mobile devices. Today, there are more smartphones than people on the face of the earth. The computing power that we have today in the smartphones is more powerful, is a thousand times more powerful than the computing power that was needed by NASA to send folks to the moon, and a hundred times more computing power than it was needed to send the latest shuttle to Mars. Big data. We live today in the zettabyte era. A time today where if I look at your social profile, I can predict the next time you're going to get married, you're going to buy the next product, or you're going to go on your next holiday. For cities, I can predict with big data predictive technologies, the next time we will have a congestion or, God forbid, an accident. And with cloud capabilities, and that's the latest digital disruption, in six weeks, I was able with my partner to launch the Uber for Healthcare. I'm not going to talk too much about the global ventures, because I'm sure most of you are familiar with Airbnb, leveraging the sharing economy, sharing assets, disrupting the hotel industry. Or recently, the CEO of Sheraton said my biggest com competitor moving forward is going to be Airbnb. If I talk about Uber, just a handful of people, do they have more market valuation than Ford and have more R&D capabilities in autonomous cars than General Motors? Today, I'm going to talk to you about Cube. It's a Saudi venture that was launched six weeks ago, and today we're serving more than 1,000 patients since inception. 
By the way, go to the Apple Store and start experimenting with it while I talk. So what are we trying to solve? According to the World Economic Forum, in last May, they have said that the traditional healthcare system is failing. If you look at the outcomes of the traditional healthcare system, life expectancy is not improving by much. Chronic diseases are still killing more than 60% of health-related deaths and are consuming 90% of health budgets. If I took out the continuous gap between the number of physicians to citizens, the number of beds to citizens, it's an ongoing dilemma, and that gap is persistent. And honestly speaking, this idea came to me three years ago when my son was sick. He had a temperature, and he was scratching his ear. I was pretty sure he had an ear infection, but I was not comfortable giving him amoxicillin and antibiotics on my own. So I called my doctor, and he said to me, I have to be able to see him to be able to determine that. And I said to him, doctor, I'm pretty sure it's just an ear infection. Can I just give him amoxicillin? And he said to me, no, you're going to have to come to my office. I waited in line, cruised through traffic, skipped all of my customer meetings and my critical meetings, and actually eventually sat down with the doctor for two minutes to look at my kid's ear and say, yep, it's an ear infection. Here's some amoxicillin. And then I thought, we have Uber. They have transferred the transportation industry. Why don't we launch Cura? Cura is the first in the Middle East app that will connect users to doctors anytime, anywhere. It is the only system in the world that is patient-centric. If I could elaborate a little bit, the traditional healthcare system is what is called as patient-centric, where they believe that the solution is the physician. So the whole system is centered around the physician. And if you can see with the doctors and some of their behaviors, if you're sitting with them, they will look at you and say, you're pale, here's some vitamin D. Although you're pretty sure you might not need that vitamin D. This is the only system that is gonna incent doctors to do the right thing for you. We launched this app in six weeks, leveraging mobile, social, big data, and cloud capabilities. And in 30 days, we were able to touch a thousand lives, connect with a hundred doctors, and do more than a thousand consultations. You can check us out on Twitter right now and follow us, please. We're at Abcuro in Twitter. Since this is about smart and connected communities, I had to take it one level up. So how can we talk about mobile, social, big data, and cloud capabilities at the city level. And I have to talk about my day-to-day -day job, which is Cisco. So I'm gonna to talk to you here about what Cisco has done, a little bit, just away from Cura. What we have done in partnership with the city of Barcelona, CAD, and the port of Hamburg in transforming those smart and connected communities. In Europe, on average, a citizen or resident spends a third of their time, of their lifetime, looking for a parking spot. What we have done through location-based services, through a mobile app, and a sensor in the roads, we were able to help the average European resident find a parking slot. This has reduced the traffic congestions by about 30 to 40 percent. If you talk to the most municipalities in Europe, the number one bill item and the number two were street lighting and waste management. And through smart lighting, we were able to connect to LEDs, those smart lights, and able to transform and save about 50% of that bin. And we help, in terms of waste bin management, reduce the number of trips that the folks have to do to pick up the waste by 35%. I'm looking at the time, and I was given only eight minutes today, but I know that I have shared a lot. I want to thank City Quest for giving me this fabulous opportunity to share with you some of the wonderful things that the Internet of Everything can do to transform businesses, lives, cities, and countries. And I look forward to take over the conversation during the networking sessions. I want to thank you so much for giving me this opportunity.